Thank you for waiting. Here's channel one. This is thematic session one by Yokohama City University and CityNet Yokohama Project Office. Session title is Student Proposals for Future Urban Development Toward the Realization of the SDGs in the New Urban Agenda. I'd like to introduce the speakers. Professor Nakajo Yusuke, Vice President of Yokohama City University. Dr. Suzuki Nobuharu, Professor of Yokohama City University and participants from the IACSC International Student Forum. As guest professionals, Dr. Marina Panganiban, Department Head, Urban Development Department, City Government of Makati. Mr. Takekida Masao, Executive Director for General Affairs Department, International Affairs Bureau, City of Yokohama. The moderator is Dr. Omori Fumihiko, Assistant Professor, GCI, Yokohama City University. Dr. Omori, please start the session. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, could you hear my voice? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we start the presentation, uh, I would like to invite Professor uh, Yusuke Nakajo, uh, Vice President of Yokohama City University, uh, to offer an uh, op uh, opening address. Nakajo Sensei, you must go on. My name is Nakajo, Vice President of um, the Yokohama City University. I thank you all for your participation, uh, despite your busy schedule. So, uh, on the uh, rep representing the university, I would like to express my uh, sincere appreciation for all those who have helped uh, uh, to realize this um, uh, session. And. Um, this is a uh, the joint session um, as uh, part of um, the Asia Smart City uh, Conference, and uh, uh, this is a session led by the students. Um, and uh, this is an online session, uh, like the, the previous, but uh, it is the, the 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 new urban agenda. Um, and the students will be making proposal to the theme. Now, in the program today. Um, there is an international uh, academic Consortium for Sustainable Cities, uh, which is an inch initiative uh, led by our university and uh, various uh, universities um, in Southeast Asia. And uh, three teams will be making presentations today. And uh, today we have um, uh, Dr. Melina Apanganiban, uh, Department Head of the Urban Development Department, City Government of Makati, and also Mr. Takekira Masao, uh, the Executive Director of General Affairs Department, International Affairs Bureau of City of Yokohama. They will be giving their comments um, uh, in regards to the presentation. And after that, and uh, we will have some discussion amongst the, the commentators and the students. And for the students, um, it is an invaluable opportunity for them to make presentation in international conference like this. And uh, on the 16th of um, the October, we had the, the Academic Consortium International uh, Symposium. There is a, a joint initiative, and uh, this was an opportunity to deepen our collaboration. So this is going to be a short session of about an hour, but I look forward to the session very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, Marigato. Uh, so next, uh, Dr. Suzuki, uh, the professor and the dean of International College of Earth and Science in Yokohama City University, uh, will present about the International Academic Consortium for Sustainable Cities and the program of this uh, International Student Program presentation. So, Professor Suzuki, uh, please start. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Nobuharu Suzuki. I'm teaching urban design in Yokohama City University. So uh, this session focused on the students' proposal for sustainable cities based on the concept of SDGs and new urban agenda. Uh, the students develop uh, their uh, proposals at the International Student Workshop held this summer. Uh, before the student's presentation, I will briefly explain the activities of IACSC and uh, uh, an uh, urban planning unit in which uh, Yokohama City University participates. 
And uh, also, uh, we will I will explain about the overview of the international student workshop. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Ah. So ISCSC, uh, International Academic Consortium for Sustainable City, is a consortium of universities in Asian countries, uh, which was inaugurated in uh, 2010. And the uh, first General Assembly and the symposium was held in Yokohama. Uh, the member universities are the U University of Philippines, Manila, uh, Los Banos, and uh, Hassandi University from Indonesia, the uh, University of Science Malaysia from Malaysia, and Tamasati University from Thailand, and the University of Social Science and Humanities in, uh, in Vietnam and uh, Yokohama City University. <clears throat> so this is the outline of the IHCSC activities. Uh, we have annual meeting, general assembly and symposium in each year, but unfortunately, uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 problem, last year and this year, uh, this was uh, the online meeting. Uh, and we also have uh, uh, the unit activities. Uh, there are three unit, urban planning, environment, and the public health. In each uh, unit, uh, they have an international joint research program uh, and also the intercity technical cooperation and uh, education program. So this uh, international student workshop is a part of this uh, education program. Okay, so this is a case of international joint research. Uh, research on the urban heritage conservation in Asian big cities was conducted uh, from 2014 to 17. Uh, the, it includes the case studies from uh, nine cities from eight countries and regions. And this was initiated by YSU and supported by JSPS Kakenhi grant. And uh, the results of is uh, reported and published in uh, three languages, uh, Japanese, uh, Chinese, and uh, English. So this is the case of uh, the intercity technical cooperation project. Uh, this case is among uh, between Yokohama city and a seven place city in Malaysia. The project name is urban design focusing on history and natural resource in Surampera city. And in this project, uh, the Yokohama city and the Yokohama city university uh, created a joint team and worked with uh, Surampera city and uh, USM, uh, Malaysia, uh, Malaysian university. And this is uh, the, this project was funded by JICA and I guess this is a model for intercity cooperation through collaboration between local governments and uh, universities. Okay, so another uh, activity is uh, education problem. A uh, program, the international student workshop program is started uh, two thousand eleven uh, uh, from the. The, the Penan uh, conference at the time. Uh, this is an intensive one-week one program for students in Meba University to visit one of the ISCSC participating universities. The venues are loaded every year and held in summer during the summer vacation. And the, this program is the field work and uh, the workshop by inter-university student team for the solution of the issue of uh, host city. And finally, they have a presentation and editing the final report. Unfortunately, uh, this uh, last year, uh, this program was, uh, program was uh, canceled due to the COVID-19. 
And this year, uh, we turned this uh, feedback program uh, to a COIL program, what we call COIL program. COIL program is a collaborative online international learning. In this program, uh, we have 32 students from uh, four universities, Tamasati University, Sanding University, Vietnam National University, and Yokohama City University. The workshop theme is the student's proposal for sustainable cities towards the realization of SDGs and the new urban agenda. So new urban agenda is uh, uh, the playbook for the uh, SDGs target 11, uh, sustainable cities and communities. Uh, the students review the urban planning of their cities from the perspective of new urban agenda and SDGs. The program starts uh, from the last July. The first phase is a video lecture on YouTube. And nine video lectures were uploaded from five universities and uh, allocated to uh, five topics. And after that, we have an online discussion. Uh, faculties and uh, students meet on Zoom and discuss about the topic. Uh, at the beginning of September, we have an online presentation, uh, presentation from each university. And then after that, we have, uh, we allocate all the students into five topics in a mixed uh, group. And then uh, we have they each group has an online workshop and uh, uh, make the pro presentation a proposal uh, for the the topic based on the new urban agenda and the SDGs concept. Finally, uh, there are five uh, groups for five themes. And among the five themes, uh, two team had the presentation at the IHSC Symposium on October 16th. Then the three team, they are going to have a presentation in this international conference. So from now on, uh, we would like to invite the student to have a presentation uh, based on their studies. Okay, so this is the introduction of the uh, this workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Suzuki. Uh, so let's get to the international student presentation uh, for the proposal of sustainable cities towards the realization of the SDGs and the new urban agenda. So uh, they have a great work on the, the difficulty of the pandemic only by the limited online communications. So uh, Team C, uh, are you ready to start presentations? Yes. Okay, let's get started. Please share your uh, uh, presentation. Can you see my slide? Yes. Can we start? Okay. Good morning, yes. everyone. Good morning, everyone. We are Glyph C, and our theme is nature conservation and biodiversity in the city. I will begin the presentation. The moral philosophy and conservation movement focused on protecting species from extinction, maintaining and restoring habitats, enhancing ecosystem services, and protecting biological diversity. Nowadays, a growing population are placing higher demands on the natural systems in and around urban areas, which affect biodiversity. As humans continue to consume natural resources, many organisms are headed for extinction, and this is the issue of nature conservation. As an issue, we need to find ways to maintain human well-being through sustainable land use, efficient resources, 
use and patient resource use and the protection of biodiversity. So next, uh, we want to think about sustainable development goals uh, related to our issues. We have five goals in here. Goal number 11, make cities and human settlement inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Goal number 12, achieve the sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources. Goal number 13, strengthening the resilient and adaptive capacity to climate related to hazards and natural disaster. Goal number 14, managing and protect marine and coastal ecosystem to avoid significant adverse impacts. Goal number 15, managing forest sustainability restoring the great lands and reducing the great natural habitats and ending biodiversity loss. Next slide, please. Okay, and now uh, um, we will say something about a good example to deal with the issues. On the left, uh, you can see the green on zero waste lifestyle. This is a phenomenon example for personal practicing. Using public transport and green vehicles like bicycle, walking, bus, or using electric car, saving resources and using green energies uh, also can minimize the negative impact of carbon emission. And the last, using reusable container bags and bottle can reduce the garbage we move away to the environment. And on the right, you can see the developing ecotourism. I think this is the, the, the effective way to do both emission. Uh, these are economic developing and uh, natural conservation. And the best thing we can do now, uh, at the present is educating and encourage or maybe raise a witness uh, of both residents and tourists about conservation of nature and cultural access. Okay. Yeah, come to our case study. We take in Thailand. So the tourism, uh, we talk about uh, ecotourism in Thailand. So yeah, the tourism industry in Thailand is the country's second largest revenue earner, second only to computers and computers uh, components. And yeah, tourism has driven direct and indirect employment of 11% of Thailand's total uh, workforce, or around 3 million people generating 79,000 million baht in tax revenue for the government. And yeah, to achieve sustainable tourism, local communities are the most important group to be educated and encouraged to take part in tourism management at every level, province, districts, and sub-districts. And yeah, local communities play, play an important role in any effort to sustain such a tourism development because local communities are ideal guardian of their own environment. And yeah, uh, about uh, Tourism Authority of Thailand, or TAT, has, has then made ecotourism uh, guidelines at points one, three, and four, which are more uh, directed at nature protection and community development. And yeah, talk about ecotourism, we take in Umpang, it's located among rich mountain and dense jungle on the Myanmar border with no roads to provide the access. And yeah, but you know, there are more over, over tourism during the hike season but the limited accommodation and restaurants could not uh, cope with the high demands by tourists, leading to many problems such as uh, population density, garbage accumulation and littering, and also environmental deterioration. Next slide, please. And yeah, uh, when the road from the that was built, opening the area, it quickly uh, became popular. The most popular activities are white water rafting, jungle trekking, elephant riding, visiting hill tribe villages and many stunning waterfall, including uh, Tilos waterfall, claimed as the most beautiful waterfall in Thailand. And yeah, uh, as the problem that I told you before, how about the strategy to, to solve this problem? According to Tourism Authority of Thailand, I have made 
two projects. The the first project is measures to meet ecotourism principles that consist say, that consists eight points. The first one is to limit tourist numbers in accordance with the area's carrying capacity, permission to enter the preserve, garbage reduction and cleanliness adjustment, donation, set up a coordination center, manage quality service, zoning, and information science. And the second one is developing ecotourism. And this uh, developing ecotourism consists of seven points, which is public campaign plan, human resources development, formation of handcraft, preservation of the cultural environment, abridging the standards of economy, accommodation. And the uh, six is a uh, marketing promotion plan. And the last one is public relation. And you know, with these uh, two projects, uh, Max Umpang won the Pacific Area, the Pacific uh, Asia Travel Association or PATA, good award in the ecotourism travel related to projects category. And the Asian Tourism Association or ASEANTA, uh, award in the category of the best Asian conservation uh, effort category. We, we, we believe ecotourism is an effective way of development with preserving environment. Therefore, we propose three ideas from case studies and other sources from for successful ecotourism. It is expected that Tourism areas will be properly defined for tourists. The development of sustainable infrastructure will be possible for Goal 9, Target 1, and to prevent land and marine pollution for Goal 14, Target 1. The second is to preserve the cultural environment. By preserving a unique environment, it creates the individuality of the region. The differentiated environment becomes an important source of research. We need to focus on human resource development by providing local people with educational opportunities about environment conservation and ecotourism. They will manage ecotourism and employment will be increased. Uh, okay, uh, so after knowing uh, the virus is uh, contained in the case study, we suggest uh, that ecotourism will be implemented. Uh, not only that, to make it easier for tourists to get information related to Umpang, ecotourism will be uh, supported by Smart Village Management. So uh, we can uh, see the picture Smart Village consists of smart government, smart economy, smart mobility, smart living, smart environment, smart tourism, and smart people. Uh, please, next slide. Uh, as we all know, ecotourism is a tour that uh, has specific objective to learn, uh, uh, admire, and uh, enjoy the natural scanner with the plants and with life, uh, as well as the culture that exists in that place. Uh, uh, here you can see, uh, that included several dimensions of a uh, smart village that are closely related to ecotourism. Indicator in the smart environment uh, in the form of natural condition, pollution, control, environmental protection, and sustainable resource management. This is what makes a smart village very easy for the realization of ecotourism. In short, we combine technological innovation with ecotourism potential. Uh, smart environment uh, based, uh, based on the village needs to have proper infrastructure such as roads, bridge, building, pipelines, uh, communication lines, and so on. Smart environment explore that idea of a smart environment where information and service are aimed at meeting the needs of local people such as information or energy consumption and pollution, uh, society in environment as well as in uh, the management of renewable energy and use uh, of innovative technological uh, that have a negative impact. Uh, smart tourism uh, refers to smart destination or uh, smart destination. In the context of tourism, smart destination uh, allow us area both urban uh, and rural, to optimize the use of data, control and co coordination, and information technology. 
uh, protocol, process, and infrastructure in creating economic development and improving the quality of life in a sustainable manner. Please, next slide. Uh, to realize the smart village uh, specialist smart tourism, we propose that reservation sites around the world countries and government work together to management or restaurant, hotel, and other reservation in uh, a single reservation system and application. With this application, tourists and people who uh, accept uh, tourists and can get this information. We believe that uh, by managing and visual, uh, visualizing data, sustainable and smart tourism uh, can be realized. Thank you for uh, listening. My tools we have uh, shared benefit for all of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Team C. Thank you. So uh, let's get to the next uh, presentation team. So uh, Team D, uh, are you ready to have a presentation? Team D, uh, are you ready? So uh, team D not ready for presentation. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Let's get started. Can you see the screen? Yes, you can see. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so good morning everyone. This is the group D and we're going to talk about the transit oriented development mobility service in Ho Chi Minh City. Or oh, the next slide, please. And this is our content that are we going to talking about in this presentation. Or oh, the next slide. First is the overall view. We start from the population of Ho Chi Minh City that are 9 million private vehicles in there. Population density is the inner city very high. That come to over 10,000 people per kilometer. From that 9 million private vehicles, that there are more than 825,000 cars and 8 million motorbikes. Based on the data, we can conclude that driving a motorbike is a habit that is very hard to break. On the next slide, please. Social behavior about the motorbike. If we talk about people behavior in using motorbike, there are several things that we must pay attention to, including the motorbike is second most used personal transportation. The motorbike is the fastest transportation if travel on the road because of the motorbike can get to the, go to the other transportation due to the size of the motorbike. The motorbike is the fastest and the most convenient, but it has the most leaks. If it got an accident, the price of the motorbike for the maintenance is cheaper than car and other transportation. On the next slide, please. The problem is the beside there also the several problems that we have. First is the diversion of the traffic lane is not really effective. The traffic infrastructure is still weak, planning is not cynical, and the awareness of participation in traffic is not good and 
encouraging on the growth side for the business. The number of the traffic conservation also increasing. Those problems have an impact on increasing environmental pollution, number of facility, and also the traffic jam during the peak hour. As we know, this problem are against the principle of low carbon city and sustainable city. For the next slide, please. Solution to this problem are increase the use of public transportation, increase the traffic awareness and load transportation infrastructure. And for the next slide. Ship Plurish in Mobility. Recently, Todd Lipman described the shipping plurish in mobility. Based on this table, the old plurish is really focused on automobile, only training transportation, improvement, and the new planning. Plurish expand the range of the objective impact and option consider the consideration. And if we are really focused on the point of the new party team, it's really talk about the asset of the TOD principle. Like the mode, consider that we are fo focused on the multiple model, walking, cy cycling, public transport, etc. For the next slide, please. TOD is a development concept and it has been defined generally as a mixed use community that encourages people to live near transit services and to disclose their dependence on driving. Tra traffic development orientation as a basis for the urban development and planning. Take the traffic hub as a population gathering point from which the further from form a distributed transport system. With this concept, TOD will solve some problems related to traffic jams and protect the environment. According to Institute of Transportation and Development Policy, there are four principles of TOD. First one is walk and cycle. Second, mix and connect. Third, transit and shift. Fourth, fourth densify and compact. According to architect Karlsrup, TOD can be divided in two types based on the scale that I intensity of transit system services and the scale of service development around the TOD area. The first one is urban TOD. It has high intensity of land use for offices, business center, high and medium density housing according to the size of environment. The second one is neighborhood TOD. It focuses on developing medium density housing, commercial and services and entertainment. Also, it has the facility to fulfill the needs of residents so that it can reduce the automobile dependency. Tama de Entos is one of the TOD examples in Japan. The picture shows the railway map in this area. It was advanced by Japanese private company Tokyo Corporation. Central business district and suburb area are connected by the Entos line, which shows Sorry, which shows the green line in the picture. Also, big shopping malls were invited next to stations. This area flourished as a hub of commerce and residence. So go back to the Hotman City. There are both of adva advantages and disadvantages of a TOD in Hotman City. It has people interested in implementing programs, international corporations, and so on. Also, the urban railway system of Ho Chi Minh City has been basically planned. On the other hand, the inner city area has no land planned, and many previously built areas have residents and many public buildings. Based on JICA final report about preparatory on TOD, Soi Tien is one of the TOD development areas in Ho Chi Minh City. This is the site area that we, have, we are focusing on that have the radius around 600 meter from the transit area. Is the land use that uh, exists on the site a campus, settlement, and entertainment area. And based on these characteristics, our TOD in categories will be neighborhood TOD. 
You can see the map shows the designated area, highlighted green and green lines. Among them means the connection to the central hub colored brown. The red is related to the railway and blue one is buses. This illustration shows the integration area in inner transit hub. By this design, we want to encourage the way of people using public transportation easier and more enjoyable. As we mentioned before, TOD has a, a lot of positive thought, uh, sorry. This green open space area is one of aspects to implement the concept of RBD. This concept will support to create environmental sustainability. As we mentioned before, TOD has a lot of positive, positive sides, while it has negative sides as well. For example, speaking of economy, economic growth can be foreseeable and comprehensive social planning should give a constructive solution to the social problem. At the same time, environmental protection should be considered. As we know, TOD is a concept towards for sustainable cities. The Center for Transit-Oriented Development found that TOD produces 43% less emissions than environment suburban development and increased property values for residents. With principal work and cycle, the TOD concept has an impact on the environment by reducing the emissions. From the Chicago Metropolitan Region, region study, there is a relationship between lower transportation and green gases, greenhouse gases. This is the end of our presentation. We picked up Ho Chi Minh City from the point of developing TOD. Thank you so much for your attention. So uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Team D. So uh, next, next is the last presentation uh, from Team E. So Team E, uh, are you ready to have presentations? Okay, let's get started. Uh, okay, uh, first of all, I want to say hello to everyone today. Uh, so today's topic on our team is uh, Chinatown in this city and uh, experience preserving Chinese culture. Lesson apply to the preservation of culture for other country. So why is the Chinatown? Um, of us, this Define a Chinatown as a district of any non Asian. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, especially a city or a seaport in which the population is predominantly of Chinese origin. Trading center populated predominantly by Chinese men and their native spouse have a long existence throughout Southeast Asia. Uh, the long coastal area of Southern Asia. Uh, several Chinese settlement existed as early as the 16th century, according to the Jehe and Thomas Philip travel accounts. Several China Asian towns, although not yet called by that name, had a long history. Uh, the Chinatown had been portrayed in various, including the Choi of Love, the Bitch of Little China, Year of the Dragon, Lenny from Shanghai, and so on. Today, the Chinese diaspora in Asia is largely concentrated in Southeast Asia. However, the legacy of the uh, one widespread uh, overseas Chinese community in Asia and evident by many Chinatown heads are uh, found in across East, South, and Southeast Asia. Ethnic Chinese arrived from Southern mainland China were many Chinese people of Canton, Hakka, Hokkien, and Tiochou or Chao Chiu, Stock and Park in Hainan, Hokkien, and Hengwa in some country. Uh, this topic uh, provides a basic knowledge about Chinatown in this city, in Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. 
Then we will compare and analyze the similarity between the Chinatown of this country and find the basic difference of this Chinatown. Next slide, please. Um, first of all, is Chinatown in Hanoi, Vietnam. Uh, today, Hanoi has changed a lot. Uh, the Chinese community is basically gone. Uh, but the reserving trade of Chinese culture, especially in the area of refer to the old town, is still a necessary uh, addition to in to increase the historical and uh, aware inspiring beauty of Hanoi for thousands of years. According to a statistic in 1974, there was about 3,000 Chinese in Hanoi since the 17th century. Overseas Chinese has been uh, raised uh, residing in Thang Long. Over time, Hamburg Street has become one busy overseas Chinese side in Hanoi. Uh, most of the Chinese are from China, Guangdong province. Uh, after the takeover day in 1954, many Chinese people immigrate to South Vietnam. The remaining Chinese, due to agreement between the two governments, uh, immigrate to South uh, of, uh, of China or Vietnam in 1954, uh, the children of uh, the Chinese are uh, allowed to go to uh, the Chinese only schools. Although they are free to go to school, it's very difficult for Chinese children to get into the university and to study. Uh, but it also is difficult to find a job. A small number accept into pedagogical schools and later become the teacher to teach their children. After the liberation of South Vietnam in 1975, the government of Vietnam and China have a clear disagreement. The Chinese in the north near the sino vietnamese border began to live in Nam Chinese by, by the land road. At the end of 78, Chinese hit the Vietnam border and then the massive uh, the of uh, the Chinese both from Ben Chai, Hai Phong, uh, that's that people from, from Hanoi as well. Later, on the, uh, all those who left Vietnam by World Way, including both Chinese and Vietnamese, were collectively referred to a refugee in other names, both people. Back to the Hamburg. Hamburg is a 300 meter long street extending from Dazi to street to intersection of Hang Ngang, Hang Dương, Lan Ong in the east of Old Hanoi Old Quarter. Uh, the Chinese had less many architecture in prison on Hamburg Street. At the end of uh, uh, 2018, the Ministry of Culture, Sport and Tourism sent a document to Hanoi People Committee to apprise of the project to restore the and embellish the release of the Canton MVC Hall in order to return the beauty of this historic site. At 26 Hamburg Street, it's Quan De Temple. The temple was built in 80, uh, 1890 by the overseas Chinese community of Canton origin. It's the play to worship Tan Quan De uh, in addition to work uh, bearing the in of Chinese culture, Hamburg Street has also historical release of special importance in Hanoi. It's Bad Ma Temple at the house of number 76, one of the four town town of Citado. Uh, the temple worship the god Long Do, uh, who is considered the emperor of town of Citado. Next slide, please. Uh, the Chinatown in Jakarta is called Vecina. Uh, one of the most uh, famous Vesinang uh, grow up in Jakarta, located in uh, Indonesia capital. Vesinang uh, grow up have become the one of the biggest market in Indonesia with thousands of stores alongside numerous shopping centers. With rapid economic growth, Vesinang grow up is simply become one of economic center in Jakarta. Uh, and then next slide, okay. Uh, back to the history. Vesinang Glodo is uh, the name uh, called from how people in, uh, impersonate the sounds of the water spout in the center of the play back then. The area Glodo uh, sub-district, they to 
but the colonial times when it's November 1740, does East India Company decide a lot product at the residential areas for uh, the ethnic Chinese, but long ago, uh, before the Dutch settled, Rodo had a residential area for ethnic Chinese in 1690. Uh, the Chinese were already living in the east of Sevilla Silicon River, uh, which was not far from uh, the port. They sell wine, rice, and other necessary, including the drinking water for migrants who stop at the port. Uh, this economic activity also lured 4,000 of Chinese people to Sabah. Uh, swift immigration uh, changed the city limited infrastructure uh, structure and greatly uh, the burden of, on the city. Uh, this is uh, why colonial uh, government tried to restrict the Chinese migration through the deportation. But the action did stop the whole Chinese community to grow bigger and run the economic activity. In the history of Jakarta, Janita has played in a significant role in formation of the city. The Janita has uh, accompanied the Jakarta uh, along its journey and we had been around since the city was still known as Batavia. Uh, the Chinese had among the actors who played a major role in the formation of urban space when Batavia became the, uh, to develop. Uh, after the few centuries, Jakarta Chinatown, which is now known as the Rodok area, uh, continued to exist in the uh, bustling commercial area. Uh, next is the Jakarta. Uh, Chinatown in Yokohama. Next slide, please. Uh, when Yokohama opened uh, its port in 1859, a foreign settlement was established near the harbor. This area is still called Kenai, uh, meaning in the settlement. Many facilities of the Chinese were built in the settlement, and, is, and uh, this is an uh, original form of Chinatown. Later, uh, there was a period of decline due to the war with China in the abolition of the reservation. But during the recovery period of from 1923 earthquake, uh, the area was transformed into the Chinese Orient, uh, a town as Western returned to their home country. Uh, during the period recovery from World, uh, World War II, uh, it worked closely in the Yokohama city uh, administration. As a result, uh, Chinatown became a tourist uh, destination, and many Chinese people moved from the Chinatown to the surrounding area due to land uh, prices and other factors. Uh, Yokohama Chinatown was built near the park, the park. Uh, uh, graceful and uh, public rest uh, room were also built in the Chinese style. Uh, next, let's talk about the Chinatown community. Community is an uh, essential part of development, uh, and there there is some of Chinatown where the community has protected and the uh, street, uh, street cut and the uh, uh, way in the city is. First, the Yokohama Chinatown Development Association, a Chinatown community has established a community development agreement. The agreement has stipulated the maintenance of landscape, public safety, and the environment. In the agreement, there is a clause say, do not violate with the China Charter. The China Charter is a set of specific goals in the development of the Chinatown. The Chinatown Charter is a set of specific goals for urban development in Chinatown. And the community is trying to uh, de uh, develop the better Chinatown by setting or following these uh, guidelines. Uh, there are also example where the community uh, had directly protected the landscape when the plan to build a high-strike uh, apartment building in the Chinatown was 
uh, underway the Chinatown work together start, uh, to stop the project. Uh, in this way, the Chinatown had reserved because of community and the effort from the community. Uh, next is uh, uh, Chinatown in Bangkok. Uh, now, moving on to Chinatown in Bangkok. Uh, Chinatown in Bangkok has been there since the early UTL period, which is the 12th to 13th century. Uh, the Chinese have lived in the village in what is now called the Grand Palace. Now, during the Tonbury period, which is 1767 to 1782, more immigrants arrived and the community expanded. When the Grand Palace was built, the Chinese settlement was relocated and was moved to some area, which is the origins of Chinatown, Bangkok. Nowadays, it's called the Yaurad Road, which means Young King, and the name was bestowed by King Rama V in honor of his son, Crown Prince Mahavajulunit. Between the World Wars of 1918 and 1931, the Chinese immigrants, uh, immigration, excuse me, 1.3 million. And as adept merchants, the Chinese community prospered through trade and gradually grew as immigrants from China, including the non teacher minorities, increasingly flooded into Bangkok. By the turn of 19th and 20th century, Chinatown had become Bangkok's main commercial area, as well as one of the biggest Chinatown and one of the most famous Chinatown in the world. Now, it is important to note that most of the land in this area is held by the Crown Property Bureau, or CPB, and, uh, which is owned by some of the noble families and is leased to the individuals or companies doing business in this area. So pretty much meaning that normal people, if they want to own property here, they must have uh, permission from the CPB. What we've seen so far is that through persistence and merit alone, the Thai Chinese community was able to thrive within Thailand through adaptation of their culture uh, to fit the locals while still maintaining the integrity of their culture. And we'll see why in a second. Next slide, please. Now, this, these are the comparisons between all the China sounds that we've seen so far. One of the similar things, similarities are uh, all the cities act as a tourist attraction and there's no there no clear demarcation of Chinatown, such as gate entrance of the city, uh, which is in typically in Chinese religious architecture. This development of the culture and community within the Chinatown has led to the formation of city's identity, which means that it's very identifiable just through the, um, the people, the architecture, and the uh, behavior of the locals itself. However, there are also differences between each of the Chinatown. First of all, it's geographical location the integration process between the Chinese communities and the locals. The representation of the culture, we, we can see that it's um, quite different um, throughout the different geographical locations and how trade is done between the locals. Overall, Chinatown offers a revealing look at how a group of people bounded geographically, culturally, linguistically, and can flourish to become a more vibrant, courageous, and proud community of Chinese descent. The success of survival and success and survival of Chinatown depended greatly on the family and districts associations, which serve as political and social support systems to newcomers. The members strove to meet the basic needs of community and represented a united voice to fight against discriminatory legislations. Not only that, um, relating back to the new urban agenda, which is we commit ourselves to the sustainable leveraging of natural and cultural heritage, both, both tangible and intangible. Tangible meaning that something that we can see, which is which are the products, the architecture, and the <clears throat> culture itself. The intangible is the behavior of the people or how people are uh, usually move within the district itself. Uh, in conclusion, what we've seen so far in, in each of the respective country is the fact that China, the Chinese were able to adapt its original culture to the host country. Its ability to preserve their cultural integrity through business and trade with identifiable architecture as well as meaningful connection to the people. Furthermore, by ensuring that there are affordable housing options in any neighborhood has become a necessity. This is especially important for an area experiencing rapid demographic or economic changes. This is also vital to ensure the retention and creation of working class jobs so that residents can continue to make a living and contribute to the community that they live in providing support to local businesses that not only fund the local economy, but contribute to local and historical integrity of the neighborhood as well, which directly relates to SDG goal number 11, which is sustainable cities and communities, SDG goal number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, SDG goal number eight, 
decent work and economic growth. Thank you for your attention. This is Team E. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for all students uh, of your presentation. Uh, sorry, uh, we uh, have uh, a little time left. So uh, guest commentator, uh, Mr. Takeki there, uh, do you have some question or, or any comment for the student presentations? So thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this session. And uh, actually, I have enjoyed very much uh, all these presentations which are made uh, by students, uh, which helped me a lot to understand uh, current trend of city, uh, smart city planning. It's very uh, interesting session. I enjoyed a lot. So actually, uh, I am not uh, uh, I am not an expert of city planning, uh, but actually, I am from I am. Uh, seconded uh, from Ministry of Foreign Affairs to this uh, city of Yokohama. So let me uh, comment from uh, a little bit different viewpoint, uh, which means uh, a diplomatic viewpoint. Yeah? Probably uh, you may know uh, it's it's just a coincidence, but uh, at the same time, uh, as we have uh, this uh, Asian Smart City Conference uh, here in Yokohama today, uh, yesterday, uh, our new Prime Minister, uh, Fumio Kishida, has hosted uh, the uh, 24th Japan ASEAN Summit meeting online. So actually, uh, probably you may know the abbrevi abbreviation of FOIP, uh, Free and Open in the, and Pacific, in the Pacific region. Uh, this is very important uh, concept of, of current Japanese diplomacy. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, ASEAN side has been promoting its own concept, which means ASEAN, uh, ASEAN Open in, in the Pacific concept. So uh, Japan has been uh, supporting uh, this uh, ASEAN-made concept and has established some kind of concrete project to realize uh, this, uh, uh, this vision of ASEAN side. So actually, uh, I think it was uh, 2020, uh, Japan has uh, issued uh, jointly uh, with ASEAN countries uh, the joint, uh, joint statement uh, with regard to cooperation to promote, how to promote uh, this uh, AOIP concept and which, uh, which has uh, four focuses uh, in the uh, field uh, of cooperation and which includes also uh, connectivity and SDGs. And uh, uh, we also, uh, we also uh, list up a concrete project uh, which can contribute to realize these uh, four or fields, uh, for these four fields, uh, important point. And we also, uh, the uh, smart, uh, to support uh, ASEAN smart city network is also included uh, this kind of uh, concrete project. So uh, I, hearing uh, your uh, presentation, I think uh, probably it may be uh, one, one uh, style of cooperation uh, between uh, Japan and ASEAN to support uh, smart city building in ASEAN countries. And uh, probably uh, it will also, co uh, co also contribute to realize uh, both concepts of FOIP and AOIP. And I think it means uh, that this, uh, this project will lead to uh, realizing, uh, will lead to realization uh, of uh, peace and prosperity of this region. Uh, I think it's a, a little bit uh, too big context, but uh, it would be uh, probably uh, uh, better to understand uh, that uh, it, it would be probably better uh, to know uh, this kind of concept to have high motivation when you uh, interact with uh, each other and uh, when you uh, uh, make, co make collaboration uh, with uh, universities inside uh, this region. Thank you so much. It was a very enjoyable session. Thank you so much, Mr. Takikida. So next, uh, uh, so uh, I'm sorry for waiting you, uh, Dr. Merida. Uh, do you have some uh, comments or uh, opinions? Yes, I have some comments um, from a macro perspective to micro perspective. Yes, congratulations to all the presenters. Uh, your studies or researchers and outputs were well all prepared. It is truly amazing to see the points of view of, view of our youth today. 
to the current urban planning concerns and the possible solutions. I highly commend this program for allowing youth to be involved in these issues like mobility, tourism, nature and culture conservation, and the attainment of the SDGs. Let us not forget that the youth of today will be in charge of the future and will reap the fruits of today's action or rather possible inaction. Hence, it is more advantageous that youth sector should always be involved in the strategic plan now and their voice should be heard. Remember that fresh and innovative ideas may not always come from experts, but also from youth, my, young minds like, like our youth. Uh, since we regard the smart city development as sustainable city development, it should raise the quality of life of citizens by prom promoting well-balanced sustainable development and making use of diverse and innovative technologies created by public and private sector partnerships. The presentations have precisely shown this in various aspects. So uh, the presentation on nature conservation and biodiversity in a city by Team C has shown the impact of tourism and biodiversity. Both have a symbiotic relationship and that this can be mutually reinforcing both negative and positive. While ecotourism provides income for local inhabitants in an area, this can also affect other environmental conditions that may have negative impact on biodiversity, for example, through waste disposal, water consumption and pollution, or greenhouse gas emission contributing to climate change. As such, an effective tourism strategy or a long-term tourism plan is very important. On the TOD Mobility Service in Ho Chi Minh, uh, discussed by Team D, um, I can very well compare Ho Chi Minh congest uh, problem to and Makati City. We have almost the same problem in terms of traffic, and yes, TOD, a public initiated, requires massive investments. As, as, as presented by the group. However, we have other financing schemes or models available, which also require, which only require less public investment. And this can be purely privately initiated or public-private partnership, as we have done in Makati with our uh, Makati subway. We have entered into public-private uh, partnership. And in traffic and transportation, we have the so-called three E's, education, engineering, and enforcement of law. The presenters mentioned traffic awareness for education, traffic infrastructure for engineering, but I think they missed to include the one E on traffic efficiency, which is enforcement of law. Uh, you might want to consider inclu including this another E, which is the enforcement of law. And on the team is presentation on Chinatown on big cities and experience preserving Chinese culture lessons. It has provided some insights on the potential of Chinatowns around the world on preserving culture as well as, assimil as assimil assimilation of cultures, uh, giving way to further economic development, including marketing, marketing the area as a tourist destination, which is happening around the world, not only in the Asia, but is as well in Europe and in US. Uh, the, re the research gave attention to the shrinking historic ethnic neighborhoods with, where authenticity plays a vital role in maintaining local heritage, identity, and livability. Chinatown is a valuable ethnic enclave which is defined by rapid population growth and a prominent small sector. It can be well observed that the history of urban growth within the city is most obvious in the way development and construction has diminished Chinatown's physical space. Although Chinatowns are important part of these communities, we must not overlook some concerns such as the lack of open spaces, which increases the vulnerability towards natural hazards as well as man-made disasters. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this and wish you good luck in all your endeavors. Uh, 
Thank you. So uh, thank you, uh, all the students and the uh, guests. So it was a good experience for students to have the presentation at this global uh, big conference. And I hope they will continuously work for realizing the sustainable city and the society in the future uh, based on these uh, today's presentations. In addition, uh, universities uh, such as the YCU or other universities uh, should more actively support uh, their efforts and uh, connect their international knowledge for the sustainable urban development, I think. So this is the end of this program. Thank you so much for your watching. Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers and Dr. Omori for moderating the conversation. Thank you very much for your valuable discussion. This is the end of the thematic session one by Yokohama City University and CityNet Yokohama Project Office. Session title is Student Proposals for Future Urban Development Toward a Realization of the SDGs in the New Urban Agenda. Today, two sessions will be held simultaneously on two channels. Here's our next program. Channel one is thematic session three, voluntary local review, VAR of the SDGs, accelerating transformation of cities. And channel two is thematic session four, smart cities in Japan, Euro and Asia, realizing co-creation across regions. Please go to the channel you wish to join. You can switch between channels using the buttons at the top of the screen. As we've already informed you by email, the virtual exhibition is now open to all registered people. Please enjoy visiting there. Now, we will be preparing the next stage, so please wait a few minutes. <laughs>